I'm Lisa Ackley, Registered Dietitian Specialist for Prisma Health, and today we're going to be talking about sodium and heart failure nutrition. Limiting sodium. Are salt and sodium the same? Salt's chemical name is sodium chloride. Sodium is a mineral and one of the elements found in salt. Salt and sodium are often used interchangeably when we are referring to food, even though they are not the same thing. When walking in the spice aisle of your grocery store, you may encounter all kinds of different types of salt. From a nutritional standpoint, salt is salt, regardless of its description. When we consume too much salt, this increases the amount of fluid in the body. When your body holds too much fluid, you can feel swelling and shortness of breath. When you have a diagnosis of heart failure, paying attention to your salt or sodium intake may be helpful in preventing these symptoms. How much sodium? So how much sodium is too much? The American Heart Association recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams, moving towards an ideal limit of 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day for most adults. One teaspoon of salt is equal to 2,300 milligrams of sodium. One teaspoon doesn't sound like a lot of salt, but let's keep in mind where most of the sodium comes from in the American diet. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 70% of sodium Americans eat comes from packaged, prepared, and restaurant foods. Very little actually comes from the salt shaker when preparing fresh foods at home. Fresh fruits and vegetables are naturally low in sodium, as well as frozen vegetables and fruits that have no added sauces or seasonings. Rinsing canned vegetables can remove up to 40% of the sodium. Fresh meats are lower in sodium than processed meats, such as bacon, sausage, and hot dogs. While it's nearly impossible to count every milligram of sodium we eat, simply cooking more at home can significantly reduce your sodium intake. Reading the Nutrition Facts Label for Sodium when reading the nutrition facts label for sodium, the first thing you always want to note at the top of the food label is the serving size. The information on a food label is based on the serving size listed. Exceeding the listed serving size would require some math. When trying to determine if a product is high or low in sodium, it's important to have some reference ranges. 140 milligrams or less is considered low in sodium. 400 milligrams or higher is considered high in sodium. If we refer to the percent daily value, 5% or less is considered low in sodium, while 20% or more is considered high in sodium. What's an appropriate amount of sodium for a meal? Ideally, no more than 600 milligrams of sodium per meal is the upper limit. This is set by the Food and Drug Administration for a meal or main dish to be labeled healthy. Food preparation. The best way to take better control of your sodium intake is to prepare your own food when you can. You can start by getting inspired by reading cookbooks, watching cooking shows, or looking at recipes online. Here are some examples of foods and what herbs and spices may complement them. Garlic powder and onion powder, onions and garlic tend to complement most savory dishes. For fish like salmon, try dill. For chicken or turkey, try poultry seasoning. The bulk is sage and thyme. Citrus juices and zest also complement these meats. With a vegetable like broccoli, Try basil with a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. For a starchy vegetable like a sweet potato, try pumpkin pie spice, which contains cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. Pepper, red pepper flakes, and cayenne pepper add spice to your meals without adding sodium. Hot sauces contain sodium, but if you just use a drop or two, it shouldn't add up to much. There are many exciting flavors of no-salt seasoning blends that you can try or make your own at home. 
Salt substitutes contain potassium instead of sodium and may have negative effects for some patients with certain medical conditions. They are not recommended unless approved by your doctor. Remember, preparing fresh foods or meals ourselves is a step in the right direction in being more mindful of our sodium intake. Eating away from home. Restaurant foods can be very high in sodium. Many restaurants provide nutrition information on their websites. If you're dining at a restaurant where the food is cooked to order, you can ask your server if your food can be cooked without salt. Ask for salad dressing, sauces, and other toppings on the side. When reading nutrition information at fast food and chain restaurants, remember ideally 600 milligrams of sodium is the upper limit of sodium appropriate for a meal. Fluid restriction. If your heart, liver, or kidneys aren't working properly, you may not be able to effectively eliminate fluids from the body, and this may cause swelling or edema in the legs, arms, and or stomach. Speak with your healthcare provider about how much fluid is right for you. A food that is liquid at room temperature will count towards your overall fluid intake. To keep track of your fluid intake, it may be helpful to use the same container to measure your fluids daily. A good starting point is that 32 ounces of fluid is equal to four cups. Looking for some tips to reduce your thirst? Try chewing on gum or sucking on a mint or some ice chips. You can space your liquids throughout the day and use small glasses. Remember, higher salt intake might make you thirstier. Whole foods are closer to their natural state, whereas processed foods have undergone modification, transforming them away from their original form. A good example of this is a potato. A potato is an example of a whole food, whereas potato chips are an example of a processed food. That potato has undergone modification. Remember, preparing most of your meals from whole rather than processed foods is a step in the right direction to helping you reduce your sodium intake. Weight monitoring. Weight monitoring is important for those that have a diagnosis of heart failure. Sudden weight gain is a sign that fluid is building up in your body. Weigh yourself every morning. If you gain three pounds in one to two days or five or more pounds within one week, call your doctor. Your doctor may adjust your medicine to get rid of the extra fluid. Talk with your registered dietitian about what a healthy weight is for you and ways to reduce your sodium intake.